One of the most versatile new additions to Adobe Character Animator CC 2019 uh, is the addition of magnets, specifically the magnets behavior and magnet tag. These will allow two things that are tagged as magnets, two or more things tagged as magnets, I should say, to be attracted to each other and connect, allowing you to hold things, release them, throw them, uh, make things float or have an aura around them, all sorts of new effects and possibilities. It's a great way to interact with objects, have your characters interact with props and other things in their scenes, which is something people have been asking for for quite some time. So I put together this sample magnets project that's gonna go through a few simple examples and I'm gonna walk through it and then we're going to dig into the rigging mode and show exactly how all these things were made. Now you can follow along by downloading this project which is in the video uh, description below. There's a link down there. All right, so let's dig into some of these examples. So first we've got this bald headed dude with the coffee cup and it says, drag the hand over the coffee cup to pick it up. So I can drag the hand over here and if I get close to the cup, it gets attached to the hand. Now he can drink his coffee, mmm, that's delicious. But there's no way to get it off, right? Um, it is now stuck to the hand and no matter what I do and try to get it off, those two things are attracted together. Um, so the way to get around that is to use triggers to turn magnets on and off. And that's what we see in this fish uh, catch and release example up here. So I've got a normal draggable hand up here. And if I move the hand down under the fish, nothing's happening, it's not grabbing it. And that's because the magnet hasn't been triggered. The part of the hand that has a magnet on it uh, isn't active currently. So here I have a little note that says, drag the hand and hold two to catch the fish, okay? So if I press two, you'll notice there's this little visual indication, just a simple layer uh, trigger swap there. And if I move it now under the fish, notice that it does catch it. And if I let go, it's going to drop the fish again. So this is a way to kind of turn things on and off or to you know throw things around or um, have a little bit more momentum behind them. Uh, you, you basically, this gives you a little more control towards uh, turning the magnets on and off. And I think this is gonna be the most common thing you'll see with interacting with props. A character holding um, you know, a, a prop in their hand, a piece of paper, a coffee cup, a sword, uh, whatever you want. Um, this type of on-off magnet treatment is probably gonna be your best bet towards doing that. Now the last example here is a little bit different. It's showing multiple objects being attracted to a singular kind of magnetic field. The attraction level is, the strength is uh, brought really high on this. And so when I press the four key um, here, it's gonna turn the magnet on. I get this little electricity symbol and uh, these three blocks are kind of floating around uh, in this general area. When I let go, they're all gonna fall to the ground. And when I press it again, they'll go back up and float. So you can see this being used for like a, you know, spell or something like that, a levitation or floating uh, type thing, magic, um, you know, something like that where something is attracted uh, from far away to a particular area. All right, so let's jump into rig mode and go behind the scenes and figure out why all these things are working exactly the way they are. And again, you can download this project and follow along with me. So this first example of the guy with the coffee cup. So that's the guy group here. And you'll notice his arm uh, is attached as normal, has some sticks, and then has a handle here that has been tagged as dra uh, draggable and magnet. And if I select it here, I'll see those two have an added to it. Draggable meaning I'll be able to drag it up and down, and magnet meaning it's going to be attracted to other things that are also tagged as magnet. And the thing that this is going to be attracted to uh, is the coffee cup. So if I select the coffee cup, I see that this has been tagged quite a few things, uh, magnet, dynamic, and collide. This is a physics object. This is something that is going to move around freely and allow me to pick it up and that's one current limitation of the magnet tag at least one of the magnet uh, magnetic elements things that is, have been tagged as a magnet has to be dynamic it has to be an object that can move freely and be subject to the laws of physics and gravity so you can't really right now have a scenario where two characters are holding hands for example they're two hands which normally wouldn't be tagged as dynamic um, have magnet tags on them and they'll touch together so really this is more about interacting with um, you know, physics-based objects and being able to grab them and hold them and throw them and do other things with them. But hopefully in the future, uh, as we evolve this behavior, uh, this will change. And speaking of behaviors, uh, all this is working because I had to add the magnet 
uh, behavior to this whole thing. So normally, you know, you go up to your top level character here and you see face and eye gaze and all the normal behaviors for your character. I stripped a lot of those out for this simple tutorial and instead I just went to the plus sign and added the new magnets behavior. So let's talk about some of these different parameters you have here. Attach style uh, is usually set to weld and that's Typically what I've seen nine times out of 10, that's what I'm using. If you change this to hinge instead, um, it's not gonna be as strong of a grip I feel like, and you're gonna get more of like a um, propeller blade type thing where see it's, it's kind of moving upside down and swiveling around. And uh, for me, usually that's not the effect that I want. If this guy's coffee would be spilling all over the place. Nobody likes that. So typically I'd say go for weld instead. Magnet handles will show you all the different things that have been tagged as magnet in this file so you can see them. So here I can see that I have seven things that have been tagged as magnet. And if I click it over here, it's going to be selected over here uh, in my layers. So it's just very helpful to kind of see everything that's affected by that behavior. Strength is just how strong that magnetic pull is going to be. Um, so I set this to 100. I think by default it was it was something else like 30. But you can play around with that and see how strong you want the pull to be. The next one is range. And you can think of range as like an invisible circle that's happening around the magnet tag that determines when things uh, get caught uh, attracted or not. So in this case, it's 100 pixels uh, is, is set as the range. So that means around each of these little magnet tags, let's say, um, let's see like the coffee cup here, there's an 100 pixel circle around it. And when that magnetic field uh, touches, you know, gets on this other, uh, overlaps with this other magnetic field, those two will collide. So with that range number, if you make that higher, those are immediately going to start to overlap. So let's just try that. Let's make it 199 and go to record and you'll see immediately the cup jumped to the hand. You'll also see the blocks over here all immediately collapsed on each other um, because this is a global behavior that's affecting everything in the scene. Um, so I, even if I press two up here, I bet the fish is going to, well, it looks like it's not strong enough for the fish, but I bet if I get a little closer to it, it's gonna jump up uh, to the hand uh, instead. So play around with range if you want the, you know, kind of that jump effect, make the range higher. If you want it to be, you know, you have to be right over top of the other handle, then use a lower value. And then overlap collidables, this is exactly why that, that block collapsing was happening because those are all tagged as collide. And if I unchecked this um, and didn't allow for overlap, then you would get something like this, which is just, messing with the space-time continuum, there's there's something wrong. But basically they're all trying to, you know, magnetically pull on each other at all given times and it just creates this, maybe this is a cool effect that someone can use in an interesting way, but for now, I'm gonna say probably not. Now really quickly, I should note that the reason that this uh, cup is not just falling in through the bottom of the scene is because I've also added a table down here, um, just a simple line that was set and tagged as collide, meaning when this, um, you know, when this coffee cup touches that table, they're gonna be two collidable objects. And we have a whole tutorial on physics um, that'll go into more depth about this type of stuff, but that's the reason that this is not just falling through the bottom of the scene. Let's check out the next example of the hand and the fish over here. So um, that's all included in this uh, this fish group. Um, and we've got the fish, which is pretty much the same as the coffee cup. It's got collide, dynamic, and magnet on it. And then this arm, which you'll see, uh, interestingly, only has draggable on it. So this is an independent group, but when I dig in, you'll see it also has this other independent group inside it called hand and inside this hand group i have two states off and on and these are part of a trigger uh down here where off is the default and on is triggered with the two key so off shows up by default and that doesn't have any tags or anything on it but if i turn that off and turn on on instead it's getting a little confusing but you see that on has a magnet tag associated with it. So when you have these sorts of things, basically notice everything is independent. Everything kind of has to be its own independent part. Um, but the, the magnet uh, is only going to show up when that trigger is active. So only when the two key uh, is held down in this scenario. And so that's what the fish is looking for. When the fish, this magnet uh, over here sees that other magnet show up, 
if it's close enough within the range and strength values of the magnet behavior, it's going to be attracted to it. And that's why those two pieces are going to connect. And when you let go of it, um, let go of the, the trigger, uh, that magnet, that connection is going to be uh, broken. And so there's some momentum. So you can kind of throw the fish or move it or drop it or other things like that. Um, if you're dragging things around, it's going to uh, kind of follow with the momentum and motion that you have. So this is great for, again, throwing objects at characters, dropping things, um, having them bounce off the floor, uh, grabbing something that's falling from the sky. Uh, there's a lot of really cool possibilities here. All right, for simple magnet use, you can leave it at that. You can stop the video now, go grab, you know, coffee cups and papers and fish and uh, have, have fun with that. This next concept is a more advanced one because it is using replays and changing a value over time. So, uh, and that's this magnet and blocks example down here. So the A, B, and C blocks, those are each individual elements that each have collide dynamic and magnet, just like we saw with the fish and the coffee cup. Um, they are sitting on a shelf that is tagged as collide. And then we have mega magnet. And this is the group that includes um, this, this uh, steel magnet here, the bolt cycle, which is a triggered cycle layers animation uh, to trigger when you press down the key to have that little lightning bolt thing and then the background here. So uh, the interesting thing about the magnet is it actually has a magnet uh, behavior, another magnet behavior uh, added to it with very specific parameters. So up here, this, you know, it does kind of global magnetic settings um, up here. You'll see, you know, the attach style, the strength, the range. We saw how many handles um, and what this affected. But if I go into mega magnet, if you add an additional behavior, a magnet behavior here, you're going to get uh, custom values that only affect that particular um, magnetic uh, tagged handle. And so in this case, I changed the strength uh, starting at zero and the range to a thousand. Now range is something I wanted to keep. I did want this to have a really high range. This is a 1920 by 1080 scene, I think. So I wanted that range to be able to grab and pull on uh, stuff that was far away, like these blocks. But the strength, I started down at zero, which means basically it's off. It's not working at all. Um, and you can see this in action a little bit, actually. If I go back to record mode, let's go twirl down Mega Magnet. And if I change that strength up, you'll notice immediately um, the blocks start to go. And if I turn it to zero, it's off and then back on again. So you can see as soon as you, as soon as you even go a little bit up, these are going to start to be attracted with that strength. So you'll notice there's a replay here called Mega Magnet On, and that's a 29.3 second. Basically, it was overkill. I recorded for about, for just a couple of seconds. Uh, actually, let me just show you what I did instead of trying to explain it. So um, what I did was uh, go into my controls panel over here. I dragged in, in layout mode, um, the strength parameter, and I then uh, changed the min and max value uh, to zero at the bottom and 10 at the max. I armed it for recording. Actually, I changed to perform mode and then armed it for recording. And then what I did is press record. And I just upped the strength. And I stopped right there. What that did, if I look at my timeline, is give me this, um, this strength setting. I armed strength for recording. And because that value changed when I pressed the red record button, uh, it's recording that as a take. And so if I go here, I can actually, let me reset the scene um, with a little reset icon. That's your best friend when you're doing these sort of simulations. And I'm just gonna drag and see where that strength started to go up. Right about there is when it starts to go up. So I'm gonna um, trim this to start right immediately there. I'm gonna blend it in a little bit and then I'm just gonna drag this out. And you see that you get these little lines uh, here that um, say basically you're holding whatever that last value was. So in this case, now when I play this back, the strength is going to ramp up and it's going to stay in that held stuck position for the duration of as long as this take goes for. And so what replays allow me to do is to right click this, say create replay and trigger, and then that's something that I can trigger at any time. So now let's say if I press the six key, for example, it's going to do the exact same thing that the four uh, trigger does as well. Now, I just let go of the trigger and the things are still stuck there. So what I wanna do in this scenario is change, instead of when trigger ends to let replay finish, change that to stop or sustain replay. And now when I press six, it's going to 
immediately do the trigger, but then when I let go, it's going to stop that replay midstream. All right, so that's a quick look at magnets. Um, for me, this is a total game changer. In the Evan Flamethrower cartoon that I did, a lot of times characters were holding props, uh, coffee cups, sheets of paper, um, you know, mug shots, that sort of stuff. And a lot of times I either had to do kind of this convoluted trigger in character animator or add it over top in After Effects and it never lined up quite right. I would have loved, I would have killed to have something like this. Uh, well, I wouldn't have killed, but I, I would love to have. Some. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to seeing what everyone else creates with this sort of stuff. If you've made something cool with magnets, uh, please share it on social media with hashtag character animator. We would love to see it. And if you keep trying stuff and it's just not working out, you don't know what's going wrong, the best place to get help is on the official character animator forums where if you post your puppet or your you know screenshot of rig mode or something like that, some Someone will hopefully be able to help uh, figure out what your issue is and get it solved. So that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching and have fun.